Okay, let's take a look at the quotient rule. And what this is, uh, if the original function was this, was y is equal to a numerator divided by a denominator. Now, what the derivative is would be, the way to say it is just this. Uh, the derivative would be, using the quotient rule, y prime would be equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. So that's the rule. If the original function numerator divided by the denominator, the derivative, the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. So with that rule, it's fairly easy to apply. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, in this case, uh, the numerator is 3x minus 1, the denominator is x squared. So applying the rule, and actually if you just say it as you write it, it makes it fairly easy. It would be equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which would be 3, minus the original numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which would be 2x and the entire thing divided by the denominator squared. And that would be uh, the derivative. Now you can simplify it, but in this case we'll just leave it in the expanded form. So the denominator, derivative of the numerator, minus the numerator, derivative of the denominator, divided by the denominator squared. So the result's pretty easy. Uh, let's take a look at one more example just to make sure. On this one, a little bit more complicated, but we'll apply the same rule. Uh, y prime, the derivative would be um, the denominator, which is 5x minus 1, times the derivative of the numerator, which would be 6x plus 4, minus the numerator, 3x squared plus 4x, times the derivative of the denominator, so just the derivative of that, which would be 5, all divided it's by five o'clock. the denominator squared. And I think just to remind you of things, this is going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all divided by the denominator squared. So there's that example. Take a look at a couple more. Now, there are some cases where you don't have to use the quotient rule. A lot of students look at this and they say, ah, I've got something divided by something, I have to use the quotient rule. Here's a numerator, here's a denominator. But actually, you can get by without it in this case. What you can do in this case is change this thing into this. We'll change it into 1 6 of 3x squared plus 4x. Now, if you do this, you don't have to use the quotient rule. So the derivative would be, here's the constant 1 6, then just take the derivative of this, which would be 6x plus 4, and you are done. So there is the derivative. So just because you've got something divided by something, you don't necessarily have to use the quotient rule. If it's a constant, you can just move it off the side and go back to power rule again. Uh, let's take a look at another example. Okay, now what this is, again, uh, two separate solutions. A lot of times you can solve the same problem more than one way. Uh, the first time we'll do, you've got something divided by something, so we'll use the quotient rule here. So let's try the quotient rule on this one. 
and then we'll try the power rule on this one, and we should get the same answer. So in this case, we'll go ahead and simplify it. So on this one, if you use the quotient rule, the rule says it would be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, but the derivative of the constant is zero, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. Now in this case, let's go ahead and simplify this one. Y prime, uh, this term right here, zero times anything is zero, so this entire term right here goes to zero. And what's left over will be minus 3x squared in the top, divided by, and multiply the exponents here, x to the sixth. So that gives you negative 3 divided by, now two x's on the top, cancel out two on the bottom, and leave you with an x to the fourth in the bottom. So there is the derivative using the quotient rule. Now in a case like this, you can actually use the power rule. We've done this before, but let's just see if we get the same thing. If the rules are good, they should both give you the same. So take this x cubed, move it up to the top, and make it be x to the negative 3. Now you can use the power rule. So y prime would be equal to negative 3x, and subtract 1 from this one gives you negative 4. Now we'll go ahead and simplify this. So in the top, I've got a negative 3. This is x to the negative 4. Move it back to the bottom, make it be x to the positive 4. So you wind up getting exactly the same thing. Here's the derivative here, and that's exactly the same thing you get if you use the quotient rule here. So just be aware of the fact that there's more than one way to solve a lot of these problems. Uh, you can choose whichever method you think is easier as long as it's correct. And that's some examples of the quotient rule.